anchor or something. Um, okay, Jennifer. So who is Jennifer? Let me just get my sheet here. Jennifer. Okay. Who's Jennifer? Jennifer is a NYC based multidisciplinary designer who enjoys nature, yoga, and gaming. Okay. So we're trying to learn who is Jennifer? What does she do within the world of UX? Um, I, everyone, this is what I mean. I like seeing some type of introduction sentence or what I refer to as a compass statement on your homepage to immediately let me know what you do. So I don't need to click over to about. Now, we don't have time to critique Jennifer's statement in detail, but I will say um, it's great that we know she's New York based. What is missing? I'd like to know what's Jennifer's level of experience. Does she have 10 years experience? Does she have two years experience? Is this, she's brand new to the workforce? Um, I'm not really sure what multidisciplinary designer means. I would encourage you to try and get more specific. Are you a user researcher? Are you an experienced designer and researcher? Are you a visual designer? Are you a something else? Because a multidisciplinary designer, when I read that, I'm like, okay, so what do you do, right? Um, I like that you mentioned nature, yoga, and gaming. Let's me know a little bit about you as a person and your personality. Um, so I'm gonna say, this is kind of in between needs work and good. I think with, you know, 10 minutes effort, this could be really, really more detailed and very helpful to me as the user of the portfolio. What type of projects has Jennifer worked on? Okay. We're seeing three projects on the homepage. Um, and Jennifer has done a great job because we have a photo of the project it has a title and there's a bit of a description about each project. That is the type of content or information that is helpful on the homepage so that then I know vaguely what this project is about. And Jennifer's got a date and little UX slash UI there. This one is UX and UI and this one is UX and UX research. Okay, so Jennifer sounds like maybe kind of a generalist user experience person who does a little bit of everything, which is totally fine, but let's find out. Um, oh, can we easily contact? Okay, yeah, there's a contact. So I would say, um, great, we can contact and um, we have a good sense. I'm guessing Jennifer does a little bit of everything. Okay, let's click into this one, NYPL e-reader. So tailoring the borrowing application experience for you, okay. I don't know what this is about. Let's find out. Um, so New York Public Library. Okay, the New York Public Library. So you're telling us a little bit of context. This is what I mean. If someone had never heard of the New York Public Library or didn't know what a library was, it would be helpful for us to explain. But it's great because you're telling us details about the library, how big it is, 300,000 ebooks. Okay, that's a big deal. So, as we're scrolling down this top to bottom, we're seeing is it readable? Is it scannable? Okay, we've got problem, simple touches for big impact. So, you're going to, seems like it's talking about the homepage. Simply for you, I don't know what that is. Books on your timeline, on your time. Okay. So, okay, so let's go through. So, the problem. Taking an in-depth look at the library's existing e-reader app, I discovered a couple of problems in its structure. Um, okay, so finding books, reading books, and there's no way to save books that are interested in. Okay, one thing that I'm wondering is, was this project something you did because you're passionate about the library or it was assigned to you as a project from your boot camp? or this was a client project. I'm guessing this was an, a client project, um, although I could be wrong, um, <clears throat> but this makes it seem like it was either a boot camp project or you um, just did this kind of for your own professional development. 
I would strongly recommend whenever you have numbered lists or bulleted lists, put space between the items, the list items or the number items. And what I literally mean is right here, I would like triple that amount of space because this just looks like a giant thing of text because it is. But if you had little space here, you know, make it like that much space, it's going to feel a lot easier to read, right? The other thing I would say is for each of these bullets, could you encapsulate each of them into one or two words? Like this one says there wasn't a way in the app to save books users were interested in, but didn't have time to read right away. At the beginning of this, could you say like saving books and that's in bold and then you tell us this. For this, um, could you call number two book discovery or something and then you give into the detail. The point of that having saving books and book discovery here, it makes it more readable, more scannable. Let me know if that makes sense in the chat. Okay, so, so the, the challenge I'm getting from this project, it, first of all, I love seeing before and afters. The challenge is, I think there's a lot of detail that you did not include in this uh, and the process. I want to see did you audit the existing product? Show us um, more of that. Did you do user flows? Were there wireframes? Did you do any research? I'm not sure. But you're kind of falling into the trap of going right to final deliverables and not showing us the process. So I think you could strengthen this by doing that. In terms of the readability of this, to me, it's clear with these, you know, formatting of the bullets it will be a lot clearer there's clear titles here you have different font sizes to kind of guide me as i read it you're bolding different parts to draw my eye um i would challenge you though try and go more into the process of what you did because if someone is looking at this i guarantee a, a recruiter or a hiring manager would be thinking like show me the process so Jennifer, hope that was helpful. But yes, I love seeing the before and after. That's a great way to show the impact of what you did. Um, one of the things though, if you're gonna show before and afters, it could be really, really valuable if you are kind of contextualizing what was not great about the previous and how you improved it in the redesign. You could do that by adding text here that says, Previously on the homepage, it was difficult to blah, blah, blah. In the redesign, by adding this, that, and the other, we were able to help people find more of what they were interested in. Bonus points if you uh, kind of annotated it. So maybe you're like drawing a box around this and putting text off to the side, and you're saying, like, this section helped users achieve this goal of whatever the goal was. It would mean you probably couldn't put these side by side because you wouldn't have enough space on the screen. But um, before and after, love it. You could take it to the next level if you annotated your before and after to explain uh, to people the before and after impact. Um, okay, let's keep going.